Great. Hi, Margaret. Hi, Hi. Town Meeting TV viewers. We are here today with Margaret Fowl of the Audubon, the Vermont Audubon. Um, Margaret, like you're going to come in and tell us about the neonix uh, legislation in the State House, in the Vermont State House, and we'll get into that a little bit. But tell us who you are and how did you come to the Audubon? Sure. So um, I am a conservation biologist, and I've been at Audubon 15 years now, amazingly. And I started out uh, my career in Vermont working with raptors in rehab at VINS a long, okay. long time ago. Yeah. And then I ended up going back to school and getting a master's at UVM at the Rubenstein School, studying cormorants, which is a type of bird on Lake Champlain. And gradually kind of worked my way towards Audubon after doing um, a number of years with the National Wildlife Federation. I did a coordinated peregrine and eagle recovery there, which then moved to Audubon. And um, when I started working at Audubon, I also took, not only did I do the peregrine and eagle recovery work, I also started to work with private landowners and um, talk to them about ways they can improve habitat for birds. And that's sort of what's brought me to this neonic issue, because I'm now working with a lot of farmers who um, are trying to enhance habitat for birds and bees. Okay. So before we get into the specific issue of the neonix, I'm just curious, you know, you have a special lens to look at Vermont and Vermont landscape and climate change. You know, I think about the cormorants and the first time I heard about cormorants, they were growing in population. Um, and that was probably some of the work that you were doing. Give me a little insight of what it's like to look at Vermont through your eyes when you're looking out there at the birds and and et cetera through the eyes of your specific focus. Yeah, so there's a lot I could say about that. Um, the climate is changing, as we all know, and um, with that, we're seeing um, pressures on birds. You know, we're seeing habitat loss, we're seeing um, some birds do really well, like the peregrines and eagles that have been a real concerted recovery effort for, you know, more than 40 years at this point. <clears throat> um, but in general, there was a big report that came out by Cornell in 2022, uh, birds are declining. And so um, most species of birds are declining. There's some, a few groups that are doing well, and a lot of those are doing well because of efforts like the peregrine and eagle recovery wetland protections, um, but in general, birds that eat insects, uh, birds that are long distance migrants, um, in general are not doing well, they're all on the decline. And so it's concerning because birds are this sort of indicator of ecosystem health, and we, not only do we love seeing them, they're a really important um, part of our ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So um, anything we can do to benefit birds is also benefiting people and other wildlife. And if I were driving around Vermont with you and you were pointing things out, what would you, what are things that you notice? What are things that stand out for you? Well, I work a lot in um, open habitats. That's kind of my focus with landowners. So shrub and grassland habitats. So I'm, I often am looking for the patchy shrubs, patches of shrubs here and there, especially in the Champlain Valley. Um, my colleagues are forest experts, and they can really read the forest and, scent, and be able to tell someone whether that forest needs to be managed in a way to benefit birds better or for the health of the forest. Um, so there's lots we could be talking about while we're driving around. I mean, I've always got my eyes in the air and not <laughs> always focused on the road because uh -huh. I'm looking for, at this time of year, I'm always interested in seeing if we've got any birds that are coming down from the Arctic, spending the winter here. So there's a number of hawks and other birds that are around in the winter that we don't see at other times of year. Oh. Um, and then in the spring and summer, I'm often listening. So I'm listening to birds and identifying them by sound. Yeah. Yeah. So transitioning quickly, so the Vermont Audubon works in a lot of different ways, education, advocacy, Correct. Yes, and science, and conservation. Science and conservation. Those are kind of our three main yep. arms of our organization. And so this focus on neonics, which is a form of pesticides that are being used, and we're going to talk about that. But 
One question that I have is we, I think about Rachel Carson sort of sounding the bell years ago and then, you know, kind of has it taken us really this long to respond? Why? And maybe talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so actually just testified um, at the State House about this bill and one of the things I said, having worked on peregrines and eagles, um, they were affected by DDT and Rachel Carson is the one that really called out uh, the harm that DDT was doing to the environment. Um, and I think it's not, it's more complicated with neonics. It's harder to pinpoint, um, especially with birds anyway, that they are causing declines. Um, but one of the things I said is, you know, we don't want to wait until we've lost some of these species before we act. And that's what happened with a lot of the predatory birds that were affected by DDT, you know, eagles and falcons are kind of the flagship, but there were lots, of cormorants were even affected by DDT. Um, there were lots of other species that were. And um, so my concern is that we will wait too long before we do, do something about this. And indications are, especially in the pollinator world, that, um, that there are direct impacts. All right, so let's talk about that a little bit. So what's the problem? What are neonics? What is that short for and what is the problem? Yeah, so neonics, are sh that's short for neonicotinoid, which is a type of insecticide. Um, and it's used in a variety of ways in this, um, it can be used to treat seeds. When you plant, uh, say, a corn seed, it can have a neonic treatment so that it, um, the point of that is to reduce a pest that is, um, attacks the corn or it can be used as a spray. But the most wide, u widely used method is the treatment of the seeds. Um, and so what we're seeing here in Vermont is that almost all, anything that's not organic, especially corn and soy, um, tends to be treated with neonics. It's hard to find seeds that are not treated with it um, right now. And um, so a lot of farmers don't really have a choice and a lot of farmers are using it. And are, is the problem the widespread use of it by big, um, bigger corn and, um, you said corn and soy, bigger corn and soy, or is this also for the farm, home gardener as well? It's mostly for the large farm. Yeah. Um, you know, there are certain, you can, I think it's possible to, get seeds that are treated with neonics for your home or grass seeds or something like that, yeah. but typically it's more uh, likely to be just for large scale farm operations. And so the problem is that there's this seeds that are and the sprays and it's hard to get corn and soy that it's not treated, but what's the impact? What's the impact that ha it's having on wildlife or? Yeah, so I can't speak as well about bees as I can about birds, but okay. um, generally what I, from what my understanding is about bees is that it's, um, because it's, it kill, it, it, it can leach into the system by being in the seed. So whether it's through the soil or through the plant. And so there's a lab at UVM that's been testing the level of neonics in honeybees and other bees around the state. And they are finding that it's in the bees and there's a correlation there with decline in bee populations. Um, that's about the level of knowledge I have there. But my, what I know about birds is that it can both directly, so there are three ways that it can affect birds. There's direct mortality. So if a bird eats a seed that's been tre treated by a neonic, it can die. Um, the, the seeds can also leach into the soil and cause, um, you know, get into the waterways and then kill the insects that these birds depend on for food. Um, so that's really important one. And then there's what they call indirect effects. So while it may not kill the bird, um, it can cause disorientation, it can affect their migration, it can um, throw off the timing of migration, it can also um, affect things like neurological issues, reproductive success and things like that. So there's a growing mounting of growing and mounting body of evidence 
that is showing some of these indirect effects. Yeah. yeah. And again, um, when we're talking about bees, we're talking really about not just honeybees that we're seeing and boxes that are being moved around, but all pollinators, is that correct? Yeah, and you know, one distinction that is being made, obviously, is honeybees is like a, it's like a farmed animal. It's not a native species, uh -huh. whereas we have a 300 or more native bee species in the state. And those are all, uh, many of those are declining and some are almost gone. Yeah, amazing. And then I imagine if, and maybe this is, if birds eat those pollinators as well in some cases. They do, then, yeah. you know, they tend to eat more um, flying insects like uh, flies, um, but also they will eat caterpillars, especially during the breeding season. Yeah. Um, and they, some birds eat, you know, obviously, Robins eat earthworms, so some birds eat grubs in the ground. So yeah. the birds eat a variety of different kinds of foods. Um, yeah. But the the birds that are declining the fastest tend to be the ones that eat insects. Yeah. So maybe just and you know again this may not be your area of expertise, but again the problem if we're focusing on what's the problem is we can't get these seeds without the treatment. And so what is the alternative for farmers and how does Audubon work and what's, what's the conversation around that in the legislature? Yeah, so there's a bill that's been introduced. It's called H706. It's still in the House Agricultural Committee right now. Mm -hmm. They've been hearing testimony for a couple of weeks at this point. Um, and I think they're continuing to hear it this week. Um, and the bill itself would prohibit the sale of treated seeds, but also the use. So um, there was just a bill, a similar bill passed in New York State, and there's been a bill passed in Quebec. So kind of surrounding us, there have been some similar bills. Um, and the bill would kind of force the manufacturers to provide seeds that aren't treated with neonics. Um, you know, I, organic farmers don't use neonic treated seeds, but non-organic farmers do, and um, this would sort of force the ma manufacturers to change how they sell their seeds. Um, but does it also indicate a bigger support for the agricultural community to find different ways of farming in an organic method? Is that something that Audubon works with, say, NOFA Vermont? We do work with NOFA Vermont uh, in a number of ways. Um, we're not, we don't, I guess in general, we don't advocate for or against organic, but we, we advocate for what's best for the birds. Mm -hmm. And um, so in this case, getting rid of the neonic treated seeds seems like it's the best option for birds. Um, and from what I've heard, there was a panel that uh, UVM hosted, the Quebec farmers who've already transitioning out of neonics is that they're, they're not having a hard time getting the seed it's not more expensive, and they're not seeing a difference in yield. So what their experience has been is that these treatments aren't really necessary. Cool, so it's not a problem. Not to we them. Found a, yeah. We found a not a problem pro problem. Right. Yeah. right. Um, tell me a little bit, so it's H706, that's in the House right now, it doesn't have a companion in the Senate. It's in the committee still. It's still in the committee. Mm -hmm. and. Um, What's the testimony been like? How, what is the House hearing from? What do you, how are you all paying attention to that? Yeah, so I've been watching some of the testimonies. I haven't seen all of it, but um, there's been testimony pro and against the bill. Mm -hmm. um, the, in general, the scientific community, so UVM Extension and Audubon and Vermont Center for Eco Studies have all been testifying, and NOFA Vermont, have all been testifying in support of the bill. Um, uh, and there have been some farmers that have testified in support of the bill. I've seen some testimony from other, uh, like a golf course testimony, some, a representative from a golf course, some testimony from the Agency of Agriculture. Um, Ag Agency of Agriculture, my sense was that they, they're not against the idea of banning it, but they want more studies done. Mm -hmm. um, and some of the farm um, farm community is seems to be against the bill. There, there's concern that they're not going to be able to find the seeds easily and that it's going to be more expensive. Yeah.
Yeah. Um, and what are you expecting? Are you hoping that this legislation is going to make it through this session? Well, the hope is that the committee will make a decision before the crossover date deadline, which I think is the 15th of March. Yep. And then um, and help me then with it that. The crossover the date is if it's not out of committee by the crossover date and onto the floor, it's yeah. not happening. Yeah. I don't think okay. So. Yeah. Um, and then once, if it does get out of committee, then it would go to the House, the full House, and then we'll, see, you know, we'll see where it goes from there. Right. I guess is the, if it makes it to the House, then there will be more testimonies. Yeah. So are you are you making friends through this process? Well, I'm part of this uh, pollinator coalition, which yeah. is um, a group, you know, a variety of organizations working together. The, the intention so that's was the protector. Is yeah, that the protector, protector of pollinators? Vt. Org. Yes. Great. Okay. Um, so VPERG, um, I won't get all the names because there's lots of them. UVM Extension is part of the group. Uh, the Sierra Club, uh, Merle, Vermont, NOFA, Vermont. Um, there's a bunch of us that have been. The intention was to really get the word out about Neonix, do a, a pretty targeted outreach campaign, um, see what happened in New York, and if the bill passed, then introduce our own bill. So that's kind of what's been happening for the last year or so. Yeah. Um, and it's been fun. I'm not, you know, I'm not a policy expert. I'm a scientist, and so. It's been fun to see the way things work in the state house and kind of get to know the process and yeah. get to know the people a bit um, who are behind the scenes making these things happen every day. I mean, the lobbyists work really hard, yeah. uh, and the legislators work really hard. Yeah. They've been listening to testimony for weeks now, um, yeah. and they're really listening carefully and and thinking this through. Yeah. So that's been kind of a cool process. Yeah. I also just want to say, like, I I realize that. We're throwing around a word like pollinator pretty loosely, mm -hmm. and you know pollinators are important. Do you just want to talk about that for folks? Why is a pollinator species important? <laughs> sure, because it's yes. Big deal. Most pollinators are insects. Um, the only pollinator that is really officially a pollinator that's a bird is a hummingbird. Uh -huh. We have one species here. It's called the ruby-throated hummingbird, but they are um, you know wildlife that move pollen from one flower to another and fertilize those flowers and they're essential for our food systems and our health of our natural world. Yeah, um, apples, blueberries, right. all, everything that yeah. relies trees, on trees. I mean, everything, yeah. Yeah. trees, grasses, flowers, you know, you name it, all, everything relies on pollinators. Yeah. Um, and each, some pollinators are more specialized than others, so some are really specialized to get deep into a plant and get the pollen out of there. Um, some are more generalist, so like a honeybee can take pollen from anything, but some bees, you know, really, and some bees travel long distances to, to pollinate and gather the pollen. Um, some bees only travel a really short distance. Yeah. So there's a lot of variety out there and there's um, a lot that I don't know about them, but uh -huh. they are essential. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is interesting to think about that and certainly like to stand next to, say, an apple tree. I'm thinking about that right now mm -hmm. in, in the spring. The spring. Right. And you just, if you pause for a minute to hear the, the yeah, sound the of it, yeah. and you know, mostly those are imported honeybees. But if you look closely, there's going to be a couple other insects yeah. in there as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, and there are little tiny bees that we don't even, we can hardly see that are pollinating as well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have how if folks want to know more about this, I think also we want to show at some point the vt.audubon.org. Maybe just talk a little bit about, again, what the offerings are about Vermont Audubon and mm -hmm. how do people get involved and understand more about what you do at the Audubon and specifically this legislation? Yeah. So. Audubon Vermont is actually, we're part of National Audubon, which is a national nonprofit. So we are a state office of National Audubon. And National Audubon has its own kind of overarching strategies and goals, and our work fits into those. Um, but we have, like we said earlier, three main arms policy, education, and conservation. Um, we have staff of maybe 
10 to 15 people depending on the time of year. Well, it can go up to 40 in the summertime when we have kids around for summer camps. Um, we're based in Huntington. We have a center there that um, is a great demonstration of forest practice, healthy forest practices, maple sugaring, as well as a place to just walk and cut, you know see the trails and the different habitats. Um, so sure, is the sap boiling already? We haven't tapped our trees. Oh, We're tapping them next week. So, oh, interesting! Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yep. We hire seasonal staff to do the yeah. sugaring, and they don't start till next yep. week. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it was an early year this year, but I'm sure we'll have more sap yep. flowing. We. Um, we have a big Sugar on Snow event and during Open House Weekend, which is a great event for families. Is um, that in April? Is that, will that be? End in, of March. End of March. 23rd, okay. great. I think. And yeah, so we, um, you know, our mission is to connect people with birds, and but we are also really, tr you know, like that bird decline I was talking about, we are trying to reverse the curve. So. Right now, they're on this. So many species are on the downward curve. We want some of them to be going back on the upward curve. So our work with landowners and partners and agencies um, and schools and everything that we do is all focused on working towards um, improving bird habitat and populations. Great. So people can go to vt.audubon.org to see more about um, the opportunities there to get involved with all of those different areas. Mm -hmm. And if folks want to weigh in on H706, they could go to the state, uh, the vt.legislature.something rather, the legislative page as well, and look that up and find your house rep. Yeah, um, we did just send an action alert out at right. Audubon. Um, so if anyone who's on our action alert listserv, encourage you to send a note to your rep um, to encourage them to, to move the uh, process through the committee and into the full house. Yeah, specifically those who are on the house ag. So, um, and maybe do you know any of the house ag reps from Chittenden County? I don't. Yeah, yeah. that's okay. Yeah, sorry. Um, no, think, that's okay. I think anyone that I met was from Chittenden County. Yeah. Anything else that you wanna add before we close up today? Yeah, oh, thanks for having me. It was great, yeah. you know, and I yeah. hope that we can continue conversations about our work. And yeah, so Margaret Fowl with Vermont Audubon, and um, if you want to learn more, again, go to vtaudubon.org. And thanks for watching Town Meeting TV.